welcome back to Book and Page. We have a bit of an author profile today before we get into Eric Maria Ramaque's All Quiet on the Western Front. As a warning with this entire book, I'm terrible at pronouncing German names and interestingly enough, French names as well. Because it turns out that Eric went back to the French pronunciation of his last name rather than continue using the German pronunciation. Just a little fun fact for you before we get into the full profile for Eric. He was actually born June 22nd, 1898, so just barely before the turn of the century for the 1900s and passed away September 25th, 1970. So he actually lived through a wide period of the 1900s, which is more impressive when you realize he actually survived both world wars. Now originally he started out as a young boy going through schooling in a Catholic school, and he was actually heading into teaching when World War I broke out. He was conscripted into the German army and actually served during World War I. And this was about the time he started writing fiction as well. Unfortunately, July 1917, he was injured by some shrapnel from a British bomb and spent much of the rest of the war in a hospital. It is interesting to note that he was actually heading back into the army when the war finally ended. So he was saved from sort of a second period of service during World War II after this injury that he experienced. But his entire experience precisely shows up in All Quiet in the Western Front. He was a man who survived the war, but it had entered when he was young, and it affected him deeply. So he wrote what he knew in a lot of ways that he also knew other people were going to have to know. And so when All Quiet on the Western Front came out, it was an instant success. But interesting, Eric was not an instant success. After the war ended, he actually returned to teaching in 1918, but sort of dropped out of doing that by 1920. It wasn't really, I guess, what he was aiming to do. He did bounce around for a while between 22 and 25 uh, as an editor and a writer for different magazines. And then, All Quiet on the Western Front. Published 1929, so about a little over 10 years after World War I ended. So it wasn't too soon, there was a break, and Eric was actually able to make a connection not just with a German audience. Many people actually read All Quiet on the Western Front, it was translated into other languages, so people found a connection in this book that maybe we weren't always expecting to find. So among Americans, British, French, as well as the Germans. In fact, the Americans seemed to like it so much that they very quickly secured the movie rights for it. In 1930, they actually released a movie based on All Quiet on the Western Front. So within a year, but the movie didn't do so well because it was an American movie about a German book about World War I. And this book actually starts with a little section in the very beginning which says that this is neither a confession nor an accusation. This is simply a fictional account of people who suffered in the war. So it really was trying to portray the German side and the soldiers on that side as they were, not as terrible, terrible people, and also not the most virtuous people who were doing the right thing either. They were simply people caught in their country's 
argument amongst itself and trying to deal with it. But apparently, I haven't seen the film, apparently though the film as an American film did not come off the way the book does and it actually apparently portrayed the German army in a really poor light. At least that was what was said, it bombed among German audiences and interestingly enough they attempted to re-edit the film for a better German version but by the time that aired the Nazi party was actually already gaining power in Germany and some people argue that the Nazis actually subverted the release of the movie to the point where they actually had people go into the theater and, and attack people. So whatever reason for it, All Quiet on the Western Front as a book had this major success, but the movie came out and the success in Germany started to flag. The movie was successful in many other countries, including places like Belgium, and Germany didn't, and then the Nazi party got involved. And here we are actually approaching World War II. Like I said, Eric survived both world wars. He fought in World War I, he did not fight in World War II. Eric was a major opposition to the Nazi party, so he recognized where Germany as a country was going and actually left Germany for Switzerland the day before Hitler was named Chancellor of Germany. Which was probably a very lucky move because unfortunately his sister did not leave and he found out later she was executed by the Nazi regime for anti-Nazi comments. So what actually happened is Eric moved to Switzerland and then eventually to the States where he actually continued to write about war, how it affects people, how it separates people from countries, and his version of fiction actually spread from just World War I accounts to consider World War II accounts. A Time to Live and A Time to Die, for an example, is a later World War II book that addresses the issue of concentration camps, which is not something you'd necessarily hear, see from an earlier book like All Quiet on the Western Front. But a lot of people simply couldn't imagine something like that anyways until it was right in front of them. The Germans did go on to lose the war. A lot of Eric's books were actually burned and banned during wartime, but he wouldn't let the country get away very easily. Following the loss of World War II, Eric was actually a big proponent of forcing the German people to recognize the crimes and sins of the Nazi regime, which is why he kept insisting on publishing and trying to publish still in Germany, despite the years where his books were books non grata, as it were. Towards the end of his career, though, he was actually considered too political in most of the countries that had been reading his books prior to this point. Maybe again, twice stung, no one really wants to talk about World War I and World War II anymore, they just want to get past it. But what, for whatever reason, Enrique, now an American citizen, moved back to Switzerland, got married to his second wife, and eventually passed away in Switzerland as well. Though he did spend a lot of his later life attempting to track down the people that helped execute his sister. So both World War I, which he experienced firsthand, and World War II, which tore his country apart, were deep inspirations for Eric Marie Remarque. And I think in a lot of ways his books are worth reading so that we can get a chance to experience things without ever having to have fought in something like this. This is a really gruesome, tragic novel Again, that is neither a confession nor an accusation. It is what these people went through in a horrible time period in their lives where a lot of young men were killed 
or if they did survive, were torn apart anyways. And Eric actually had to experience it twice, World War I and World War II. So he's definitely a reader, a reader, an author worth reading. If you get a chance to pick up any of his books, for sure you need to do it. But All Quiet on the Western Front, for many people, is actually on a list of necessary books to read. I read this one during high school and I have kept coming back to it and back to it and back to it when I need a reminder of things that I am lucky to have never needed to go through. So I'm going to start reading All Quiet on the Western Front and I hope you'll join me. See you next time.